I asked you to stick a parallel over your shoulder. Hello, hello, Tim, are you there? Can you hear me, mate? Good morning. One, two, three, four, four. That's a sweet How do you make this look good? <laughs> this is probably the worst absolute garbage. Why? <laughs> Welcome back to the School of Calisthenics for another YouTube lesson. Uh, we are, you're gonna wonder why, why are we holding a cushion and a parallel over your shoulder? We're talking handstands, we're talking about variability. Yeah, we wanna bring a little bit of motor control science to the table with this one. And what we're gonna try and I show you- just messing about. Well, it's kind of part of the same thing. But the science part of this is that we're gonna try and broaden out your handstand skills. So many times when we learn to handstand, we think about going in a linear progression, it gets pretty serious and bogged down we can have a little bit of play and also improve the variability of our handstand skills by mixing it up, different surfaces, different hand positions, that kind of thing. Welcome to a mock version of my front room. Now, you might be wondering, why have you got a pair of parallettes, a bit of a rug and a cushion out? And we're going to explain about uh, training variability and we're going to use some examples to show you. Now this video is a little bit twofold. There's some real benefits of using parallettes and we'll come to those in a second. But what we're also going to, want to talk about is the variability within just practicing on different surfaces to enhance the robustness and adaptability of your handstand skills. If we only ever focus by practicing on the same floor, the same gym, or in the same place, we get really good at that. But then when you're on holiday, you're at the beach, you're in a park, you want to do a handstand, okay, you might find all of a sudden what is a really nicely honed skill all of a sudden falls apart because the hand difference or the hand um, placement or the surface is a little bit sort of uneven and all of a sudden you can't do a handstand. Anymore. Is it a slightly different stimulus, just the surface? Um, so it's good not only to build up that so that you can do it in other places, but actually it's quite a good um, part of training with, with a skill-based thing like a handstand to actually just build up that, those different options that you've got. So you'll find that when you go back to your favorite surface, it's actually going to feel a lot better because it's got even more variability built into that skill process that it's been working on. Yeah, when we talk about this, like we're balancing on our hands and using like our feet. If we were only ever really good at standing on one kind of surface, when we go out and we go and climb a mountain or something, or we were going to want to go and operate in a different environment, the system just doesn't know how to regulate or how to control itself. So think of it in the same way, add some variability, and the great thing about this that I like is it brings in an element of play. It's just kind of fun to see, can you do a handstand with one hand on stand on, with one hand on a cushion, which we're gonna have a go at in a minute. But just, yeah, bring some stuff in, play with it, be creative, use skills which you are confident with. There's no point trying to do a handstand on a BOSU ball if you can't yet do a handstand on the floor. So, so build up so it's kind of it's nice and progressive. That's the first point, and we're gonna show you those exercises in a second one in a minute. The second one is about parallettes. Now, if you're finding that you've got wrist pain or you've got a, a history of some wrist issues, you're lacking mobility, whatever it might be, having your hand in this position with the whole of your weight bearing down on it could, could potentially yeah. be a little bit sore around the wrist. The parallettes are a great little alternative for that because we get to create this position, which is more neutral for the wrist, and it starts to then just create a more stable shape, ultimately. We might want to work towards getting our wrist mobility improved so we can do it on the floor. We might only ever decide that parallettes are the thing for us, yeah. and that's entirely down to you. But the other thing is when you grip, you're sort of, the finger position has changed, and now we're gripping, and it's almost like a joystick. But we know from what we know about like uh, shoulder health, we know that grip strength is related to rotator cuff strength. And so we get a nice bit of activation of your rotator cuff so the stabilizers around the shoulder by gripping tight into, um, into the parallel, into the bar as well. So as you see, when, when Tim's going to go up into this, you're going to see that the hand is working now like a joystick. So rather than the fingers and a normal handstand being the brakes to stop you going over the top, it's actually going to work like an like a old school joystick anyone old enough that, that used to play video games on joysticks. But you can see there, just the little small adjustments are now coming more from the wrist rather than from the fingertips. And so you can play around any of your progressions in there, whether it's your frog stands, whether it's taking one knee off, two knee off, or whether it's you wanting to go into some tucks and some full handstands, you can work through all of the different um, exercises that you're gonna do for your handstand just using um, the parallettes as a variation. It may be because you've got some of those wrist issues that Tim talked about, or it might be that you just want to have that, that opportunity to, when you see some bars, to be able to do it on, or just literally mixing things up just to give the brain a little bit of a different stimulus, and you'll find that like when you mix those two things together with your normal handstands, on the parallettes, it gives you that variability to your, your practice and your training. There's also a little beautiful sort of sidekick on this one, in that the higher you go, even though you can do the skill on parallettes close to the floor, 
when you get up off the floor, the visual and vestibular challenge around that changes a little bit. All of a sudden, fear creeps in. Just a little one, again, for building up some robustness. So if you want to go higher level parallettes and start to do some work on there, it's a nice little brain training <laughs> fear, session brain for fear game, as well. Yeah. The second part of this little video I want to show you is just around using some different hand surfaces. Jacko's boy's so, cushion. Tim, <laughs> can you do a handstand with one hand on? Oh, I thought you were going to go one cushion. on the cushion, one on the pallet. Oh, well, we, you could, could be we, could, we could be. It's just giving, giving you some ideas of some of the different things. What have you got at home that you could actually just challenge a different stimulus and go, okay, rather than... Um, and it might be, okay, you still you haven't done a full handstand yet, but you want to work on your frog stand and just build up some of that robustness and variability to the practice. Nice, well done, Tim. The, um, that you're just working on the level that you're at at the time. You're going try through. that now, see if it can do The it. level that you're at at the time might be a frog stand or it might be um, a wall kick-up or whatever it may be that you're at and just going, okay, I'm going to have a little bit of play around, bring in some excitement from the play stimulus and then go just challenging the same... Um, the same end result of a handstand or a frog stand or a kick up or whatever it is but just with a little bit of a different stimulus the other um, good thing about the cushion there is if you're a bit worried about your frog stand yeah use it to practice the head going down confidence the final one is you might be at your mate's party and he's got the sheepskin rug out and he's like oh can you show me that that trick that you the shag pile that, that, <laughs> that you can do and you're like you're like yeah of course i will and if you've never when you've never tested it out before and say if you have had a very linear um training process where you only use the same bit of floor with the same markings on it with everything visually the same uh, then also in terms of like feeling dexterity exactly the same and then you just shift that and try and do it somewhere else you might find that the whole your whole skill um uh, skill set just falls apart so this is my favorite sheepskin rug. I don't know if it's officially sheepskin but um, go in take it and just feeling how it's different like I actually haven't even done one on this yet but it does feel you can see specifically away, different when you grip the floor is now going to move a little bit so it's just a variable from the, the training stimulus play around with it guys the, the idea being that we're just altering and mixing up the stimulus a little bit forcing the neural system to learn something slightly different can develop the control strategies You've effectively then got more tools in your arsenal and then been able to actually control and nail your handstand by having more variability in your practice. So be creative, keep it safe, work with skills that you can control, have some fun with it. Like the humdrum and the, the ongoing sort of pressure of learning to handstand, there's going to come points where it get a bit bogged down. Great opportunity to take a side step out, play with some other things with some more basic progressions. Not only does it give your brain a break, but I'm pretty confident that by just mixing some of this stuff up, incre increasing the amount of variability, developing the robustness of the skill, yeah. will actually feed back into the practice that you're working on in a very controlled, stable yeah, environment. 100%. So go sideways, not always up. Work about broadening out that, that, the width of that skill, as opposed to always thinking about a linear progression of one step, I've got to go all the way through. Yeah. Variability, and, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Variety, it's another V. My, I want to make one final little point on it is that when we um, when we start to when we start to do some of these things, and Tim said like play with it, and actually giving your brain a break, but it gives your like mind a little bit of a break of well, if I'm very good, the thing I can do, and some people panic when they go, oh, I can't do it anymore. It might be one day, just not feeling right for whatever reason, and it, it doesn't go great. When you take yourself and put yourself in a slightly different environment to have a bit of a play and test yourself you're a little bit not, you know it's not your normal thing, so if you fail, you don't feel bad about it because you're like, oh, I'm just learning. Yeah. And it just gives you some of that freedom to actually explore it and as Tim said, widen that base. And then uh, ultimately, you will get better at your handstand, but and we're also gonna have a whole toolbox of places that you're gonna be able to do it in. So there you go, loads of stuff to play around with it. Your opportunities with this type of training are limited only by your creativity, bravery, and common sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And all those things are going to help you get a better handstand in the end. So if you want to get on your handstand journey, you want more content like this, we have got a full training program designed to take you all the way from absolute beginner through to handstand hero in our virtual classroom. And you can head over there and check it out now. We have been working on trying to do a handstand for six years and we have refined the process over that whole period. And We've updated everything. We have this, it's a, this brand new handstand program that is the best that we've got. Everything that we've learned along the process from two ex-rugby players that have come with broken shoulders and dislocated shoulders and all these injuries 
and is uh, 30 odd years old now, going, how does we, <laughs> close to 40, how do, you wouldn't believe it, would you, look at that face. How, how can we learn how to do a handstand and what's the most effective way to do that? And uh, that's what we've wrapped up in this brand new program. So please go check it out. Um, a lot of you have been asking about stuff to do with handstands. You can buy it as a, a standalone program on its own, or you can get it as part of one of our memberships, which start from as little as 9.99 a month or 99 pound for the year to become a member of the School of Cloud Science Virtual Classroom. We'll see you there soon.